This was my last year in high school. Uh, I graduated just recently. However, for the last few years, all throughout high school, I've annually attended a summer youth camp in Virginia that's dedicated to training students in Christian worldview. It's a week full of lectures on philosophy and apologetics and ethics and leadership, all kinds of good stuff. I love it. It's probably my favorite part of the year, besides this. However, not every experience I've had there has been a good one. You see, the first year I attended, one teacher presented a talk entitled Faith Before Reason. I thought the theme of the lecture was going to be something like, you know, don't let skeptics intimidate you. Investigate their claims and see how they line up with the evidence. That would have been a great talk, but alas, it was not to be. The gist of the lecture was, no matter what other people say, no matter what arguments they put forth, always hold fast to your beliefs, even if the evidence clearly stands against them. I was a little bewildered when he finished speaking. I didn't understand. How could you reject the overwhelming weight of evidence just because. Well, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I thought, man, maybe I misunderstood it. So I invited him to lunch, and we talked about it over the next few days. And at the end, I finally asked him, you're telling me that if I'm a Muslim, and a Christian presents me with overwhelming evidence that the claims of the Quran are false, I should ignore them and keep praying to Allah? He looked me right back in the eye and said, Yes. Now, this way of thinking, not that extreme, but something like it, is actually pretty widespread in the church today. It's referred to as fideism. There are many believers, including people I know personally, who think that we humans are so fallen that we can't even trust our own thoughts, or that it's sinful to trust in reason rather than in God. And so we should set reason aside and base our religion on faith alone. And I have tremendous respect for those people. However, I would contend that that position is based on a critical misunderstanding of what faith and reason actually are and what scripture says about them. I believe that reason is essential to faith and it's an integral part of reality we just can't ignore. And when we do, it harms our witness. Today we're going to look at three arguments for why reason is so important to people of faith. First, everyone here already trusts their own reasoning. And I say that because using reason is absolutely critical to everything that we do. If you disagree, I would challenge you to find one idea you've ever expressed, one paragraph you've ever written, or one decision you've ever made that didn't employ reason in one form or another. You probably won't, because we always have reasons, whether good ones or bad ones, for what we believe, what we say, what we do. Even when you read scripture, you're using reasoning to decipher and interpret what's written on the page. You use reason when you think, when you contemplate, when you argue. In fact, you're using it right now to evaluate every word that comes out of my mouth. We could never learn, think, or communicate without reason any more than we could read a book without language. In the story I told earlier, this man stood up in front of a hundred of us and declared that reason was untrustworthy, and then proceeded for about an hour to list all of his reasons for why that was true. Even those who believe that reason is unreliable have reasons for why they believe it. When you begin to argue that you shouldn't trust reason, all you're proving is that you already do trust it. Now, of course, we are fallen, and the conclusions we reach through reason aren't always going to be correct, in the same way that the answers we get to math problems aren't always correct. But it's not because the laws of logic or mathematics are wrong, it's because we're using them incorrectly. Imagine if your child just egregiously failed on a math test. And they came up to you and said, Mom or Dad, I think mathematics are fundamentally flawed, so I've decided to stop studying them. Yes, our reason has its limits, and we're not going to be able to figure everything out. But the solution isn't to toss it out the window. The solution is to sharpen our reasoning skills in the same way we sharpen our mathematical skills. Everyone here already trusts reason. In fact, we have to, because it's foundational to everything else, and we can't just ignore it when it comes to our beliefs. Now, our second argument for why reason is so critical is faith and reason are not enemies. It's a false dichotomy. I think the problem is most people today take faith to mean blind belief in something irrational or unreasonable, when in fact the biblical definition is something very, very different. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, quote, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, end quote. Now, what most people don't know about that passage is the Greek word used for conviction is elechas, which is defined by Thayer's Greek lexicon as 
a proof. That by which a thing is proved or tested. So when the author of Hebrews calls us to conviction, he's calling us to hold fast to what is provably true, despite our sinful or emotional desire to reject it. That's what it means to be faithful to a promise or to a spouse, to hold to what you know is right, even when it's difficult. Take Abraham, for example. According to Romans chapter 4, when God told Abraham he would have a son, quote, he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised, end quote. Abraham was convinced. See, his faith wasn't blind belief in anything unreasonable. Rather, it was pushing away his irrational doubts and holding to what he already knew to be true by experience that God has the power to fulfill his promises. In the words of the great Christian intellectual C.S. Lewis, quote, Faith is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. Yes, without faith, our reasoning would be incomplete, erratic, and untrustworthy. But without reason, our faith is nothing but baseless speculation. Third and finally, the faithful are called to be reasonable. I think it's very clear from Scripture that God is a God of reason. He's a rational God. He calls us to love him not only with all of our heart and soul and strength, but with all our minds. All throughout the New Testament, the apostles are constantly admonishing us, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, be sober-minded, clear-headed, be watchful against falsehood. In 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Paul implores us to, quote, examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, end quote. The word used for examine there is dokimazo, defined by Thayer's lexicon as to test, to examine, to prove, to scrutinize. Far from endorsing any kind of blind acceptance, scripture literally demands that we scrutinize everything, and that includes our beliefs about God. I don't think God wants us to set reason aside. I think he's given it to us as a tool for separating truth from falsehood, fact from fiction. In 1 Peter 3.15, we're commanded to, quote, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always be prepared to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, end quote. In 2 Corinthians, Paul commands us to, quote, destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, end quote. I'm a debater, so that's like my favorite verse in the entire Bible. <laughs> but the point here is, reason belongs to God, and he expects us to use it for his glory. He does not call us to blind belief, but rather he says in Isaiah, come now, let us reason together. The renowned and very outspoken atheist Richard Dawkins once said, quote, faith is the great cop-out, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. When they're asked how they know that Jesus is God, I've seen far too many Christians reply, because I have faith. I'm sorry, but it seems clear that that is a painfully inadequate answer. Dawkins is wrong about faith, but maybe he's wrong because he got his definition from watching us. Scripture does not say always be prepared to give a cop out to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the whole reason. God wants a defense, not a cop out. Once you start dating the mountain of evidence supporting a Christian worldview, I think is overwhelming. But the question we need to ask ourselves as Christians is, do we have the confidence in our God to make a defense, or are we going to keep hiding? That will be the true test 